Hello, all you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online, and you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, welcome back. It is Fabulous Friday here in the studio as I record, and yeah, here we are. (laughs) Here you are. Here we float. We all float on in eternity. It's eternity today. Again, (laughs) turns out. (laughs) What do you know? Uh, All right. Well, at least we're not running out of time. So... Since we're not running out of time, what I would like to do today, I've been doing for Friday on Fridays for a few weeks now. Just been feeling uh, the reading on Fridays. It's uh, great to get some uh, insight from a favorite book of mine, Oneness. If you haven't ever caught any of the chapter readings from Oneness, um, a book that is received and transcribed by Russia, as it says on the front cover here. Channeled material, supposedly. Very high vibe, Uh, definitely, as I like to refer to it as the guidebook to ascension. Um, It just tells you all the things you can expect to experience as you go on this magical, mythical, mysterious, wild, wonderful, weird journey that is human existence and human existence while uh, remembering your divine self. It's quite a a different drive, job, drive, journey (laughs) that no one has really laid out uh, any particular guidebook for. Uh, And I feel like this is the best guidebook that I've come across. I've certainly uh, loved and enjoyed a lot of the ideas and thoughts. And hey, here's what you can expect next. Here's what you're going to, here's, here's, you know, here's what's coming your way. So prepare yourself. I've definitely found it to be so. Um, you know, having originally read this book like 10 years ago and you don't need to read it in any particular order, which is great. That's why I love just opening up to anywhere, wherever I feel, uh, inspired to open up and start reading. In this case, um, what I did today is I just posted on the positive heads Facebook group. Uh, and if you guys aren't on the positive heads Facebook group, how dare you? That's a prerequisite to listen to the show. Get on Facebook right now. Join up. It's a wonderful group of other listeners connecting, sharing opening up, supporting one another. I just hopped on there and said, hey, give me a chapter 1 to 44. And we landed on chapter 27, thanks to Brittany Drake. And then uh, the lovely Sue Krebs from Soul Speaking uh, chimed in, hey, that's my favorite number, which I remember talking to her about a long time ago. She was actually my very first interview. And we did a Facebook Live together a few weeks ago. And I love Sue. And so, yeah, this episode is dedicated to Brittany and Sue because, yeah, it's Sue's number. And it's Brittany is the one who uh, helped to co-create today's 
uh, episode. And uh, I love interacting with you guys. So if you have uh, not ever written in a question, I would like to get those too. You can write right through the positivehead.com uh, website or brandon at positivehead.com is my email or on the Facebook group. Also, iTunes reviews. I love, love, love getting iTunes reviews from you guys. And I do have an iTunes review here that I'd like to read today from Groove Painter and Groove Painter said the best podcast I found wow that's a great title um Thank you for that. Um, This podcast is really something special. I've been listening for a few months and can't get enough. The topics covered are topics that I've been delving into in my own spiritual journey. It is quite amazing to me how almost daily Brandon and guests talk about topics that are on my mind or have just been reading about. Over and over, a speaker or quote or one of my favorite spiritual thinkers has talked about on the show. If you like Alan Watts, Abraham Hicks, Ram Das, Eckhart Tolle, then you will like this show. The synchronicities happen over and over, but the most recent one seriously surprised me. I was watching Reggie Watts on YouTube last week, and the song I saw made me think of suggesting that Brandon should have him on as a guest. The next morning, the very same Reggie Watts song was a song Brandon used to close out an episode. Wow. Keep up the great work, Reflection. (laughs) Peace and love to you, Brandon, and to all the P-heads. Yes, thank you, Group Painter. You are amazing. And yeah, the synchronicities really get wild. Um, Not only, yeah, with the show, I mean, with the listeners between myself and guests, I mean, it's on and on and on. It's all reflections everywhere we go, right? And the more we tap in, turn on, tune in, connect open to one another the more these reflections shine the more the synchronicities amplify and it's just getting wild wonderful weirder uh all the things uh it seems and i love 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 playing along with all of you and uh yeah if you haven't uh, played along by uh, co-creating an episode maybe with a question or writing a review on iTunes or you know um, just open yourself to synchronicity in general I would recommend any of you guys taking and just choosing a random episode so, you know ask someone what's a number that pops in your head between 1 and 570 I think that's about how many shows there are now whatever they say go listen to that episode see if there's a message there for you um, just one idea of how you can play and our, the, the forthcoming positive head app will have something like this you can do uh, automatically as i've talked about before super excited about should be rolling out here in 2018 at some point and it will be rather rolling out in 2018 at some point and see notice how i i change my words there as i speak i create abracadabra uh, so be it 2018 it shall come to pass <laughs> so this is the type of thing i do with myself all the time and that you guys should do too when you catch yourself saying something that doesn't have the energetic charge you want it to reframe it rephrase it rewrite the story and re create what comes next abracadabra change your words that's a great thing you can always you get tons of do-overs guys there's no running out of time or energy or oh i missed my chance all of that's garbage that's not true you are eternal you're floating in eternity as i said at the top of the show there's nowhere you you never ever run out of opportunities to get it right so all right tangent anyway (laughs) good tangent and uh yeah if you guys haven't reviewed on itunes please do so it definitely uh fuels my fire to continue this labor of love and uh, absolutely love connecting with you guys in that way oh and speaking of the synchronicity thing with the episodes the other thing i've been suggesting to folks is um is uh, going to a friend and if someone that you think would really benefit from listening to the show but you haven't been able to uh, convince them to listen yet um, challenge them to um, ask them hey give me a number one to you know 570 they give you the number okay here's an episode listen I guarantee you something will be synchronistic in this that you need to hear at this time now you've gamified it gamified the whole process and you've challenged them to it and now their curiosity is going to be sparked and what happens is they're going to get something guaranteed that is meant for them 
every time in that episode. And then they're going to be like, hmm, wow, hold on. This really touched a nerve with me. Maybe there is some validity to this stuff. My friend uh, keeps talking about all this woo-woo stuff, right? And you'll hook them that way. So that's just a fun way I would recommend playing with the show and all the um, endless hours of episodes that continue to pile up uh, in the body of work that is the Positive Head Podcast that you are all an extension of. These are your episodes, so let's use them and uh, play with them. And I'd love to hear any stories uh, of anyone that uh, goes out and does that sort of thing. That would be really, really cool and exciting for me to hear. All right. That being said, moving right along, I'm going to jump into chapter 27 of Oneness. The title, uh, at, the, at the top of this book, they always, um, Rasha puts sort of a summary of what you can expect uh, to be talked about, discussed. Uh, and in chapter 27, the nature of the journey home, deciphering the imagery that surrounds you, the power of choice with focused intent, and awakening to be here now. All right, here we go. Whichever way you look in your quest for spiritual answers, you are guided to one essential truth. It does not matter which of any number of avenues you choose to explore in your search for the meaning of your existence. The experience of connectedness to an internal to an internalized source is the culmination of the journey. It is the experience that has been sought throughout the history of your species, and the yearning for that level of connectedness transcends all the barriers of culture in belief that you have segmented you into the categories with which you identify yourselves. For the search that would have you transcend those differences is the same momentum that drives you to find the unity within your own being that transcends the limitation of your very humanness. You are not a human being. This is simply an expression of form in which you have chosen to experience yourself. You are no more a human being than you are a rock or a tree, although you most certainly are all of these things. What you are is not limited to any form at all. Yet, what you are, what you are encompasses all form and all that is formless simultaneously. You have begun to discover within yourself a level of perception that is both new and timeless. And although you have no conscious recall of these kinds of experiences, there is a sense of the familiar in them, a sense that you have tasted of this connectedness before. And indeed you have. You have chosen to give yourself the experience of reawakening. You have chosen to taste, once again, the thrill of discovery of the scope of who you truly are. You have opted for the experience of all that you fear fear that you are in order to awaken from that dream and to recognize it is all that you are not. There would be no exultation in the discovery of the first tastes of limitlessness were that experience not preceded by massive doses of the experience of limitation. You have ventured so deeply now into the illusion of limitation and of separation from who you truly are that it is indeed time for the veils to be lifted and to be able to glimpse what is actually there. That is the nature of the process in which you are already well invested. And as your experience of it has amply demonstrated, the shift into deeper levels of awareness does not happen suddenly suddenly leaving you illuminated from that point forth. You have experienced this process, and although you may not have put the pieces of evidence together until now and drawn the conclusion that some radical changes were transpiring within you that were surely not imaginary, nonetheless, those changes have begun to build to a crescendo that cannot be ignored. And you recognize that the process is one that eases you gracefully in and out of awareness, leaving you the time and distancing to digest and to appreciate the experience of it and to savor the moments of connectedness with a newfound sense of adventure. The purpose of the journey itself is the joy of pondering the mystery of it, finding the clues and deciphering what has been encoded in the imagery that surrounds you. The journey affords you a leisurely pace at which to integrate the grand illusion that beckons to you and to ponder its nature and fit it into the linear parameters of your frame of reference. As a result, you are well equipped to reject even that vision and ultimately to arrive at a vantage point from whence everything and nothing are present. 
The journey was designed by you to deliver you back to the beginning, but not before you were given every opportunity to experience fully what it was like to have ventured far from home. You embarked on this adventure fully confident that the signpost and maps would be there at the appropriate moment to enable you to return safely. For you placed them there yourself to await your own rediscovery after an, after an appropriate amount of time was provided for you to forget totally where they were hiding. Since this is your game, you structured it to be challenging and exciting, yet built in safeguards that would ensure your safe return. At the deepest level, you know that there is no way you can fail in this. You will not be stranded for all eternity in the illusion of separation because you did not quote unquote get it. You have seen to that. You have simply programmed sufficient detours and side trips into the itinerary to ensure the greatest possible sense of gratification in discovering that you are at last heading home. You are heading home whether you consciously subscribe to such ideas in the present time period or not. For the energy that propels you in that direction does not emanate from the limited perspective of your conscious physical identity, but rather is being directed from a place of greater awareness that knows, like a loving parent, that you have been, quote unquote, out there long enough. The journey home can be prolonged. That is your choice. Yet, the moments that nudge you toward reunification are calculated to accelerate your momentum by virtue of the pleasure programmed into this phase of the experience. You surely are free to opt for lengthy dalliances in the realm of dissatisfaction, frustration, and misery that you have no doubt visited along the way. But it is unlikely, given the nature of the reintegration process, of the reintegration process that those choices would be made on a regular basis. You will arrive at your destination. That is guaranteed. What is optional is the identity that will experience that arrival. From the vantage point of the timeless, it is irrelevant as to whether you or some future incarnation of you is the one to experience your ultimate homecoming. And it is not an indication of failure on your part. Should you depart this physical body and relinquish this incarnate in identity along the way? For you are a part of the journey. You are one of countless vehicles for the experience of the journey home. The experience you chose to give yourself and which you wanted to savor. It may take many lifetimes, even with an enlightened state of awareness, to bring this process to fruition. And although the illusion of this time and place is shifting in its form and vibrational nature, your perception of this quote-unquote here and now will remain your reality throughout your experience of the journey. Should you choose to reincarnate in form to experience the ongoing journey from the vantage point of physicality, it will be within the context of linear time in the linear place you consider to be planet Earth. Your perception of self with linear memory, even of so-called past lives, will complete that portion of your journey here. Once, you're experience, once you experience yourself as one with all that is here, the next phase of the process will be initiated, which will carry you beyond the multidimensional constraints of the world of form. Until you reach that definitive threshold, you will continue to expand your awareness such that it encompasses each successive heightened variation on the theme that you consider to be your life. You have begun to delight in the recognition of some of the sensations that are characteristic of the heightened states of humanness, and you have altered your priorities to allow for exploration of these levels of experience. This is part of the journey. This is not an experience that you are rewarded with additional points for racing through or bypassing. The savoring, it's funny because <laughs> I got to make a, a synchronistical statement there. Um, when I asked what chapter I should read today, um, I then uh, said, thank you all for playing. When people gave, uh, suggested what chapter I read from, you've all experienced one, got, received one experience point and shall be able to sidestep negativity for eternity or something like that. Some silly joke. Um, and <laughs> here it is. Now it's like, no, that's not the case. You are not rewarded with additional points for racing through or bypassing. Sorry, guys, they've been revoked. Um, the, the savoring of the experience is what you chose to have. And it is foolhardy to fault yourself because the journey is not yet over when at long last you have come to the best part. Take 
time to savor your connectedness to the eternal. Make a place in the structure of your schedule of quote unquote obligations to experience the sensations that come of having open to the heightened expressions of your own beingness. And give yourself permission to release the need to understand the unfathomable and instead give yourself the latitude to partake fully of the experience of it. The choices you have afforded yourself are limitless on this journey, even in your present form. You can opt for a different direction entirely anytime you choose, simply by choosing that. Considerations that would rule out following the direction of greatest joy are simple, simply choices, justifiable or not. When implementing such choices, be aware of the inner directedness of the momentum stimulating that choice and embrace that choice fully. There is no benefit to you to make choices reluctantly out of altruistic feelings of duty. Any choice is capable of immeasurable rewards when initiated with clarity and a sense of willing participation. And you may discover to your delight and surprise that the selection of an avenue that may have appeared to be a lesser choice is one that delivers a richness and perspective that could not have been attained in any other way. Know that you have chosen to give yourself a lavish variety of life experiences that run the full gamut of physical and emotional sensation. You did not intend to gloss over the surface of your journey of life without touching the heights and the depths that make it authentic and meaningful. Thus, there is no prejudgment of the relevant merit of one particular direction over another. And no telling which of any given number of choices is, in fact, the direction that will yield the richest reward. There are no right and wrong choices. There is simply choice. Uh, I was um, spending some time with uh, a lovely listener and friend, Ryan, uh, Ronit, I always want to say Ronit, Ronit last night, um, and we talked a lot about this. Um, there are no right and wrong choices. They're all good. If you can, you know, people a lot of times agonize about the, is it a right choice? Is it a wrong choice? And if you can bring the energy of whatever the choice I make, that's the perfect and best choice. And now that's the story. I'm sticking to it. So be it. It will be, and it is because you believe that. So this takes away all the concern of am I making a right or wrong choice? Just make a choice and then decide it's the best choice. And as a result, abracadabra, as you speak, you create, it is. All right. Sorry, wanted to interject that. Not sorry, sorry, not sorry. Just wanted to interject that. (laughs) Onward. The experience of life at this stage of your development is much like a menu from which the options are all calculated. All, notice, all calculated to please you, given the parameters of individual preference. Naturally, you are free to walk from the table and choose starvation. That is always an option, but hardly a likely selection at this stage of your journey. It matters little which of any number of options you select. What is important is that your life choices are made with the energy of decisiveness and that the full power of your intent supports the avenues selected. The energy of reluctance has no place in the exercise of choice when the optimum result is to be forthcoming. Four, the vibration of hesitancy, in essence, dulls the vibrancy possible in any choice. For the highest possible outcome of any potential life experience, it is necessary for you to be fully present. That means putting the full throttle of your energetic intent behind where you stand in any given moment, on any direction, or on any issue. Halfway does not count, not in the way you would wish it to, and in looking back upon your own approach to certain avenues that did not work out in the way you may have liked, it should be clear to you that energetically you were not truly present. Were you fully behind any given direction, it becomes an avenue of choice by definition and yields a result that would be of value to you. It cannot be otherwise. Once you begin to grasp the power inherent in this approach to all choice, you initiate a true understanding of the potential in the options that present themselves to you. And you recognize the treasure that awaits you in experiences you may once have never considered for any number of reasons. The so-called reasons upon which you base your life decisions are no more than rationalizations of settling for less than the highest reward in the ways that you would most value. For reasons imply hesitation and the weighing of merit of one direction over another. Once a choice is made, the reason is irrelevant if the experience is to yield the optimum result. Make the choice and be that choice energetically and watch the caliber of your experiences respond accordingly. Choose to be present energetically in all that you do for you are present 
energetically whether you wish to be or not. Your experience of life is simply a reflection of your awareness of that fact. Be here now. You have heard these words spoken and seen them written by some of the wisest among you in these times. And no greater gift has been offered you than that. You have made the big decisions already. You have chosen to be incarnate in this time frame. You have chosen the identity in which you presently travel. You have chosen the circumstances that provide a basis for the exploration of the life themes that you have once again chosen. And you have chosen to transcend the limitation of the illusion of incarnate experience and to recognize your innate divinity within the context of this form to your ongoing joy and delight. All other possible choices pale by comparison to the ones you've already put yourself behind, body, heart, and soul. When you approach your experience of life with that level of commitment, with that level of heart-centered involvement, you reap the rewards inherent in all possible levels of life experience. And you begin to discover that it is possible within the parameters of humanness. Before it is possible to transcend the limitations of your humanness, it is necessary for you to be fully present in your experience of it. For then, and only then, will you begin to be free of the ties that bind you to the limitation of limitations of form. Only then will you be ready to transcend a here and now based on the concept of form and to begin to taste the experience of timelessness that awaits you when you choose to be ready. Wow, that was a very, very powerful chapter. Definitely powerful for me as I've uh, certainly... Uh, had my own struggles with that sort of thing, not fully committed to paths that I've chosen or uh, second-guessing myself. And it's funny because uh, Ronit and I actually uh, had that conversation last night, and then this one was chosen uh, by Brittany to be read today, and it was exactly in flow with that uh, synchronicity and extension of what we spoke about and isn't that wonderful to feel that you can relax about the decisions you've made now just get behind them energetically and it doesn't mean you can't choose again but get behind them fully energetically you've already made all the big decisions who you incarnated as when where how the circumstances your parents where you're sitting now those are the big decisions all this stuff is really secondary all that matters is your energy what is the energy you're bringing to the scenario And if it's a scenario you don't prefer or doesn't fit you anymore, a relationship, a job, whatever, great. Bring yourself fully to it and watch yourself transcend it quickly, owning it, non-resistance. What you resist persists. What you wrap your arms around and love up is what you can then transcend. So, And by the way, you should be loving it up even if it's something you no longer want to choose for yourself because it led you to this point. It's leading you to the next greatest and grandest version of yourself. Well, this has been absolutely amazing, as always, in always. I do have some music to leave you lovely listeners with. This is uh, actually was sent over to me by a very good, long, long time, long, long, long time friend of mine, Craig Brown. Actually, my first friend when I moved to California many years ago. Wow, almost 20 years ago. And... um, he sent this over and it is his nephews, uh, I believe, if I recall. And uh, yeah, he was like, hey, check this out. You're going to love it. Uh, maybe you'll play it on the show. I checked it out. I loved it. And I'm playing it on the show. It is Zen Soul Music. So uh, out of LA. And uh, this song is Microphone Masters. Definitely some conscious hip hop for you guys. Hope you enjoy. Until next time, journey well. Love you all. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. Listening to this is only, it's only deaf to the ignorant. Uh, yeah, it's only deaf to the ignorant. Yeah, uh, 
It's yeah. only yo stop showing out because you're beating inside. Try to learn about love and the reasons it dies. They say the past becomes the future. Let you leave it behind. Otherwise, you'll get eaten alive over time. Stop showing out because you're beating inside. Try to learn about love and the reasons it dies. They say the past becomes the future. Let you leave it behind. Otherwise, you'll get eaten alive over sure. time. Uh, Master Roshi, turtle shells, islands made of violence. No violence, just Kaioken and hyperbolic cryogens. I spit and bomb and fluid mixed with hydrogen solutions. Desolate resolution from perfected execution. Sentiment, set of sediments embedded in ruins. Self mastery, no impediments ahead of the student. Just first world fuckery, third world luxuries. They tried to classify us and found God was what was up. But we test sumo, numero uno, electric sumo, pseudo clips, political komodo, dragon dragged them into judo flips. High scientific, I'm off Peruvian ayahuasca vine. Making some wine, taking and tasting my time, spacing hallucinogens, proven to be deaf. Buck shots and fame slush. Done changed the game up. The rest gang bang for bucks. Brothers grim and Adventures with Billy and Mandy, fuck with pugilists. We've been the coolest since Fidel yeah. Castro revolutionists. Cold as the winter, underground like massive splinter. With the speed of a sprinter, call me Flash, creating twisters like a vortex. The cerebral cortex, I can see the importance. Picture fuck like a portrait with the spiritual fortress. What is your poor best? Or are you a poor pest with a lifespan of 10 years? Look through 10 mirrors, guarantee you see 10 fears. And that equals 10 tears that you shed a year. Walking zombies is society, the dead is here. But who fled in fear? Because instead they cheer We created a sickness Now let's spread the cure My heart is pure Like water You can call me Aquafina Got the meaner The meaner That clear the mind Just like Neutrogena Balance like ballerinas Inside arenas I'm with a Gilbert arenas With the thoughts of a shy dreamer Yeah In my past life I passed twice Boy you'll be in a minute Now that's when I add rice You steal vocal cords But you still couldn't bag pies Bad vibes I get from negative entities If it was ever meant for me Then it was never meant to be Stop showing out Because you be Beating inside, try to learn about love and the reasons it dies. They say the past becomes the future, let you leave it behind. Otherwise, you'll get eaten alive over time. Stop showing up because you're beating inside. Try to learn about love and the reasons it dies. They say the past becomes the future, let you leave it behind. Otherwise, you'll get eaten alive over time. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Cause it beating his side, cause it, cause it, cause it beating his side, stop, 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 stop.